now uh, we have studied about the effect of insulin on carbohydrate metabolism now we will see what is the effect of insulin on fat metabolism uh, unlike other hormone is insulin is the hormone which promote fat synthesis it is associated with the lipogenesis otherwise other hormones we have studied so far they were all lipolytic hormones so insulin stimulate fat synthesis and storage and it inhibits lipolysis as you know that insulin it increase transport of glucose into the liver cells first the glycogen is formed and then when enough glycogen is formed then the additional glucose is converted into fat first uh, a pyruvate is formed through glycolysis and then acetyl coa is formed acetyl coa is the substrate from which the fatty acids they are formed let's see this diagram that from we can see that from glucose and amino acids first of all the acetyl coa is formed and then um we have the ion citrate and isocitrate ions that activate the enzyme acetyl coa carboxylase which convert acetyl coa to malonyl coa and then from various steps the malonyl coa is converted into the finally triglyceride uh, triglycerides they are the storage form of lipids triglycerides they are released from the liver into the blood and they are carried in lipoproteins that is very low density lipoproteins now from here the triglycerides uh, from uh, formed in the liver and uh, from uh, through blood reach into the adipose cell this is the diagram of the adipose cell and here is, is an enzyme lipoprotein lipase which is present in the capillary wall of the adipose tissue insulin it activates this enzyme this enzyme it causes breakdown of triglycerides into the fatty acids because triglyceride has to be converted into fatty acids to reabsorb in the adipose tissue and in the adipose tissue fatty acids again converted into the triglycerides because this is the storage form of the fats fats cannot be stored as fatty acids it has to be stored as triglycerides so it must be converted in the adipose tissue into the triglyceride also insulin it causes uptake of glucose into the adipose cell which provide glycerol phosphate and this all phosphate combined with the fatty acids to form triglycerides now insulin uh, one of uh, the action of insulin that it inhibits another enzyme hormone sensitive lipase and this enzyme it cause hydrolysis of the triglycerides so uh, the release of fatty acids uh, in the blood is inhibited as i have told you that it promotes synthesis of fatty acids and fatty acids they are synthesized in liver uh, now what happens uh, when the, there is deficiency of insulin insulin deficiency it will activate the enzyme hormone sensitive lipase which i have told you that it causes lipolysis of the uh, triglycerides so when hormone sensitive lipase is activated it causes lipolysis of the storage fat and there will be release of free fatty acids now uh, the free fatty acids they are used as the energy substrate and all the cells use fatty acids for energy except the brain because we know that brain it will use glucose for the energy uh, insulin deficiency it will also increase the plasma cholesterol and the phospholipid levels because the increased fatty acids uh, they will convert into cholesterol and phospholipids and uh, increased concentration of cholesterol it may lead to atherosclerosis uh, now uh, what happen when, uh, when there is insulin deficiency there will be uh, excess fatty acids forming in the liver and it will go to the mitochondria and there will be the beta oxidation of fatty acids occur so when there is insulin deficiency what happen that hormone sensitive lipase is activated and it causes immense breakdown of the triglycerides into the fatty acids so the fatty acids uh, in the liver they are increased which convert into the uh, acetyl coa extreme acetyl coa is formed which then converted into the acetico acetoacetic acid uh, not all the acetic acetoacetic acid is metabolized by the tissues and when its concentration it increases above 10 milliequivalents per liter it will lead to acidosis here you can see that there will be a uh, increased beta oxidation of fatty acids in liver and uh, which form more acetyl coa and acetyl coa is then converted into ketone bodies which are acetic acetoacetic acid beta hydroxybutyric acid and acetone and uh, when these ketone bodies 
they increase in the quantities then the condition which is called as ketosis and it will lead to severe acidosis and as you can see that it will also travel to the brain so it will lead to coma and death so this diagram it summarizes the action of insulin in the three uh, target tissue of insulin that is the muscle liver and the adipose tissue in muscle it increase glucose uptake into the cells it causes glycogen synthesis and increase protein synthesis uh, while in liver it increases glycogen synthesis, glycogenesis and it increases lipogenesis uh, while it decreases gluconeogenesis and in adipose tissue it will cause increased glucose uptake uh, which is used for the synthesis of uh, fats. It increased lipogenesis and it decreased lipolysis. Now what is the effect on protein metabolism? It's very simple that it increased protein synthesis and protein storage by increasing the transport of amino acids into the cells and also it increases the translation of messenger RNA which increase protein synthesis. Also, it increases the transcription of DNA. These are the various processes through which it increases protein synthesis. At the same time, it inhibits uh, catabolism of proteins, thus decreasing the rate of amino acid release from the cells, especially from the muscle cells. So, uh, overall, the, protein, uh, the insulin is an anabolic hormone. And insulin and growth hormone, it acts synergistically to promote growth. Uh, when there is insulin deficiency, there will be protein depletion and due to the, uh, as um, it inhibits catabolism of protein, but when there is increased, defi defi uh, when there is deficiency of insulin, a uh, breakdown of proteins occurs, so there will be increased plasma amino acid. As it causes depletion of proteins, so the protein wasting is one of the most serious effects of severe diabetes mellitus. So this is all for today. Thank you so much, students.